need to picture the scene. It's a quarter to two in the morning. I have just awoken to the sound of the boiler kicking in and the gurgling noise of the central heating water pump. The control panel says off. What's going on? I can't believe this is happening. Fortunately, it's not something sent here from the other world to torment us. Ta-ra! Yeah, you got it. It's a Dan Foss motorized valve. So hello everybody. I will keep my thoughts on this valve to the specific problem it has in this particular house. So just to set the picture here, this house is nine years old. It has a conventional boiler which will heat up radiators in each room and an immersion tank upstairs in a closet. So what is this? What does it do? And what is its deal? Well, first off, this is called a Danfoss type HPA2 motorized valve. Or if you like, you could call it a heating valve. The piece I'm holding in my hand is the electrical motor half of that valve. You can buy this in two ways. Either just this electrical piece, as I have done, or you can buy it with the water pipe containing the valve, which you would then have to plumb in to your heating system. And I will point out, I purchased this motorised part of the valve from Amazon for around about £40, including delivery. I have left a link in the description below. And obviously to purchase this electrical motor with the water valve attached to it would cost considerably more. So what does it do? Well, to put it as simply as I can, let's assume your heating is set to automatic to come on in the morning for an hour and then switch off. When this valve gets powered up, the motor will turn and open a valve in your water pipe and it will hold that valve open and allow your water to circulate through your radiators and heat your house up. When this is switched off, it will return back to the closed position and stop the water from circulating through your pipes. If this motor was to completely die and not work at all, there's a manual override lever here. So what would happen, this one is actually broken so I can't push it across but I can use the screwdriver. You would push that lever across to the manual position and you would lock it in where it would hold your water pipe open to allow the flow of water through to your radiators or hot water. When your central heating switches itself into the off position, this motor will close the water valve, not allowing any more water to be circulated through your radiators, but it's not telling the boiler to switch off. And a lot of boilers in these houses these days are pretty quiet. It basically means your boiler could be running all day long or all night long and you won't even know it's working. And the only reason I knew there was a problem with the central heating system in this house was waking up in the early hours of the morning to hear the boiler running and the gurgling noise you hear from the water being circulated inside the immersion cupboard. So after pushing this valve across two or three times and it automatically returns to the off position, it eventually switched the heating system off and you could hear the boiler die down. But if you don't know that your boiler's running, it could be running forever more, but not actually doing anything. You'll notice in this system, there's one for the hot water and one for the central heating. And you need to make sure the valve in your water pipe is free. If it's really tight or seized up, it will burn out your motorized valve. This one, fortunately, is in perfect working order. And just to be totally clear, the slot on your water valve will slot into your motorised valve. And then just tighten up your two securing screws. When you purchase one of these motorised valves, the wiring will come bare and it will need to be hardwired into a terminal block inside an electrical box, which will usually be inside the vicinity of where the valve is to be mounted. And before you start disconnecting any wires which are connected to mains voltage, you will need to isolate the electrical system from these wires. If you don't know how to do that, you either A, need to find somebody who does, or B, get somebody to just do the whole job who knows what they're doing. 
or you may well light yourself up like a bloody Christmas tree. So be warned, both these valves have both died in exactly the same way, whereas they have stopped the boiler from being switched off. What other problems these valves may cause to your hot water or central heating systems, I don't know. I can only really comment on the problem it has caused me, which is not switching the boiler off. But I will say, because this house is now nine years old, and I'm the only person who moved in here when this house was first built, so I know exactly what goes wrong and when it goes wrong. This valve has lasted nine years, which I can kind of summarise, has done pretty well. The other valve, which operates the hot water in this house, lasted seven years. So even to last seven years, I guess it's not bad really, for something that does get used quite a lot. So anyway, that's about it for today. I guess many of you out there will find this information totally bloody useless. So till the next time, adios.